everyone, it's Dan with Downforce Motorsports, and we're going to have a very unique video today. Very rarely do you get an opportunity to go somewhere and see every Superformance model and be able to review everything that Superformance has to offer. But here at our South Carolina showroom, we have the opportunity to do just that. So stay tuned because we're going to start with the slab side and work our way all the way up to our GT40 offerings and show you everything that Superformance has to offer. So hey, welcome back to our South Carolina showroom. And again, we're gonna start our review of the Superformance lineup with everything they have to offer, starting with the original Cobra, the 289 Cobra, the car that Shelby brought over from Brit Britain and converted into the first Cobra. So it is exactly that. It is the slab side. It's the car that Matt Damon drove in most of the movie in Ford versus Ferrari. And this is what we kind of term as our gentleman's roadster or gentleman's car. It is a full tubular chassis with a transverse leaf spring, just like the original cars. It, it is very, very true to the original setup. Again, slab side set up on the body, 205, 15 tires all the way around. Uh, this particular Cobra is wearing the optional kidney bean wheels. You don't see those a lot, but it's something we decided to put on this car with its Ford liquid blue exterior paint to give it a bit more of a sporty look. Um, the unique thing about the 289 slab side, it's the only Cobra that has a grill on it. All the other Cobras you're going to see here as we work through the lineup, they are grillless. So this is going to be something that is unique just to the slab side. And just like a lot of people do when they get a car or, or even the companies when they get a car, they then start to figure out how to go racing with it. And they did campaign this car with some modifications. Um, and it was relatively successful, but with anything, they wanted to go bigger, they wanted to go better. Um, so they started with the 289, and again, this car, it uses a 302 base motor. You can fit a 351 Windsor base motor in with some finesse. It's just not worth the extra effort to do that. Um, right around 400 horsepower, even a little less, is about the magic number on this. But again, they started racing this car, and that then evolved into the 289 FIA. So this is a race version of the slab side. So you're gonna see wider fenders on the front. You're gonna to start to see some of that 427 styling coming in the rear end of this car because they started to round out the rear end, started to widen it to put bigger wheels and tires on it. Hood scoops, roll bars, things that are kind of synonymous with the 427 Cobra that are absent on the slab side but are optional, you're gonna find on the FIA car. Again, same chassis as the slab side. It's a full tubular chassis, transverse leaf spring setup, but again, just a 302 based motor in these cars. With the bigger wheel and tire package, you can get away with some higher horsepower setups on this. We've seen cars like this, including the one driven by Bob Spencer, our customer manager at the Optima Streetcar Invitational. He had a 363 stroker motor putting well over 500 horsepower uh, into one of these cars. Um, probably not a you know applicable setup in the slab side, but with the bigger wheels and tires you can get away with on the FIA, that is something that's pretty feasible. So once they started to you know explore the limits of the 302 or back then the 289 motor, they began to look for bigger and better, kind of like what they did with the GT40. And from there, you're gonna go into the car that Superformance started with the tried and true Superformance Mark III. This is the SC or semi-competition version. Um, again, no grill on this car compared to the slab side. This is the car you usually see. This is the one you see, whether it's a real one, whether it's a kit, whether it's a Superformance. This is our tried and true recipe. The 427 body, the side pipes, the twin stripes, the roll bar, all things kind of very famous with the Cobra. And you're gonna find that on this car, where with the slab side and the 289 FIA, 15 inch wheels, this is where we start to venture into some options. This car, along with a few others that we have here, is wearing a set of our 18 inch forge line wheels, which are exclusive to Downforce Motorsports. But you can go either way on these cars. You can do a modern setup, you can do a traditional style setup like this car has, um, 15 inch wheels, 18 inch wheels are all kind of, you know, whatever the buyer wants to do. The great thing about the Mark III is its customization. You can really do it any way you want. Engine wise, it's the same way. You can fit everything in from a small block Ford, a big block Ford, an FE, a Coyote family, and we've even put one together with a GT500 Predator engine. Um, so the sky's the limit when it really comes to how you want to fit this car out. 
um, shies away from the traditional tubular chassis. This wear uh, rides on a tried and true and fully developed box tube chassis that is just for this car. Full independent rear suspension, coilover shocks at all four corners, Wilbur disc brakes at all four corners. This has been kind of the cornerstone of the Superformance lineup. So in addition to the SC car, Superformance also offers the 427 Roadster. So what do you get when you get a Roadster? This was, again, the gentleman's 427, the street going version of the 427, if you will. And the biggest difference you're gonna see between this and the SC, front and rear grills, or excuse me, front and rear bumpers on the car, no hood scoop, no roll bar. Now we have had customers opt into those things. Well, they'll put a hood scoop on it, they'll put a roll bar on it, and basically what they're looking for is a way to get the SC styling without the side pipes because a Roadster wears under car exhaust system. Same customization you can do on the Roadster that you can do on the SC. Same engine packages will fit in here. 15 inch or 18 inch wheels will fit on these cars. This car um, has already been sold and it's outfitted with the set of our Sunburst two wheels, which kind of style after the original Sunburst wheels you would see on these Roadsters back in the 60s. Again, from Forge Line, still use a true knockoff setup. Um, this car also is opted out with the optional Al or Amarada tan interior. And it's something that, again, if you're looking for something unique, you can really kind of customize this just the same way you can customize the SC. And those are some of the ways to go into the traditional styling. And then when Superformance started to look for some other options to style the Cobra with, that is when they introduced, not too long ago, the new Mark III R Cobra. So this is a car that has come out and it's come on strong. It is not for the traditionalist. It just isn't. But then again, there's a lot of customers that are wanting to venture away from your atypical blue and white striped Cobra and that's what this offers with its vented body, its front splitter, rear diffuser, usually come with the blackout package and a lot more of the standard or a lot more of the optional uh, equipment is standard on this vehicle. Kind of like when you find when you go from like a Yukon to Yukon Denali, you just get all that stuff by stepping into the higher end model. That's what you get with the Mark III R. Leather tunnel interior, stitching, all those things are standard on that, including the 18 inch wheels. These are factory 18 inch wheels from Superformance on this car. And again, still uses that SC side pipe setup, still has the hood scoop, the roll bar, and again, the same customization because it does ride on the same chassis. So again, you can put small block, big block, but most people, when they step into this car, they're stepping into modern colors. Like this one is wearing a Lamborghini Giallo Inti color and then they go into a modern motor. This is a car that we debuted at SEMA. It has our GT500 Predator engine putting out 760 horsepower. So it really kind of shows you some of the unique attributes that you can do with the Mark III R. Um, the HID headlights that are on this car are usually something we find far more standard on our Mark III Rs compared to just doing a normal traditional build, if you will, on a Cobra. And with the Mark III R, we're gonna step into something that you're only gonna find here at Downforce Motorsports. This is a Mark III R Roadster. There have only been two built to date. Uh, we did a blue one with black and red striping on it. Um, our good friend Vinny came over and took a look at it and immediately jumped into the car. He did a great video with Autotopia. If you haven't seen that, I recommend you check it out. There's some great driving videos that car was powered by a 5.2 Illuminator engine. So what exactly is a Mark III R Roadster? This is something that we spec'd out from the factory to come up with the option. It was the same kind of thing what we were finding when customers were asking for a Mark III Roadster. They wanted that modern styling, but they did not want the side pipes. So what we came up with was a way to run the 289 FIA exhaust pipes on this car, which run underneath the car, pop out in front of the tires, and then we came up with an adapter system to run the Roadster style headers to mate up to the FIA style exhaust. So we're very proud that this is something that we came up with in-house. This is our second one. We've already got a couple more on order. And again, more of your modern styling. With the Roadster setup, we did add the hood scoop because we felt it went with the modern styling of the car. Again, with the Mark III R vented body, the full aero package. But what we did do is on these cars, we have ordered them without the roll bar. 
And a couple of things. One, that's kind of Roadster styling. But two, if someone wants to add a roll bar, we can add it. If someone wants to delete it, that's not something we can do. So we generally order the Mark III R Roadster without the roll bar. And again, the same kind of customization, same engine packages, same standard equipment as the Mark III R uh, side pipe car, 18 inch wheels come standard and things like that. So from the Cobras, we kind of venture into a car that not very many people know that Superformance does. We don't do a whole lot of them. And it was built in the 60s in retaliation to these cars. Shelby and his crew were racing these things in SCCA and other competitions. And General Motors was having a hard time keeping up with them in their new Stingray. So what they came up with was known as the lightweight Corvette, which later became known as the Grand Sport. And with all of our Superformance products, it is officially licensed by the parent company. So our, our Cobras are all licensed by Shelby. The Grand Sport Corvette is officially licensed by General Motors. It is the only GM product that we do offer. It is a crowd favorite. Whenever someone does see one of these Grand Sports, it draws a lot of attention. Even if we have GT40s or Daytona Coupes or things like that on display, the Grand Sport pulls in a lot of attention. It is built on the original style tubular chassis. It runs a smaller body. Rumor has it 7 8 scale. I don't think it's quite that much, but it is decisively smaller than your normal C2 Stingray. Um, the vented hood, the fender, flared fenders, and then one of the unique things, if you haven't seen our video where we did a full review on the Grand Sport, uh, I encourage you to take a look at that, but this does run a full-size trunk in the back where they had the access point to get into the rear differential and the spare tire. Exposed headlights. And unlike what most people think about with a 63 Corvette, there's no split window on this car. They were reducing the weight, increasing the visibility in the back. So there's a lot of unique differences when it comes to a Corvette Grand Sport compared to your normal C2 Corvette. Again, when it comes to customizations with the Corvette, you can do something very traditional looking. I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with the Admiral Blue and White setup. This car we customize. This is gonna be a new demo for Downforce Motorsports. This is finished in Bianco Fuji Pearl, C8 carbon flash metallic uh, hammerhead stripe with torch red pinstripes, a full custom interior. It's currently wearing the optional magnesium wheels, but this car is gonna receive the first set of Forge Line three-piece wheels for a Corvette Grand Sport. Um, power plant wise, small block, big block Chevys fit into this no problem. The vast majority of customers, when they get into a Corvette, they're kind of going for that pro touring mentality. The car wears a lot of things that you would do on a pro touring uh, Corvette. Again, the full custom suspension, a coil over shocks, wheel with disc brakes, full independent rear suspension on this car still. And what we find with that is they venture into the LS and LT power plants, which are very easy to get from General Motors themselves. They're connecting cruise packages, come with everything from a naturally aspirated LS3 to a supercharged LT4, either with an automatic or manual transmission pre-packaged together. And those packages fit into this car very nicely. So this is a very popular option uh, that we find when someone is looking to get out of a Cobra or they want to get into a Corvette. This is something that's very unique. From there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna step into what did Shelby and his crew do in an evolution of the Cobra in retaliation to this. So the next thing we're gonna show you is the Daytona Coupe and then our GT40 lineup. So we've gone over the Superformance Cobra offerings, everything from the 289 slab side working all the way up to the Mark 3R and the exclusive Mark 3R Roadster that we offer here and also covered the Corvette Grand Sport. The next thing that we're gonna go over is something that we offer and it's become very popular, especially when someone has owned a Cobra and they wanna get into something with the fixed roof. All of the Superformance fixed roof cars, whether it's a Corvette, the GT40, or the Daytona Coupe, they all fit your air conditioning, heat defroster, which are sometimes things people are looking for when they want to, as I put it, graduate out of their Cobra. So the great thing about the Superformance offering here, this is a Shelby, a Shelby CSX 9000 series Daytona Coupe. The great thing about this, this is gonna come with an MSO from Shelby through Superformance, with a CSX chassis number adhered to this car. So it adds a lot of value to this car. It adds a lot of collectability. 
It's very much originally styled after the original cars. Peter Brock was very influential into bringing this car back to life through Superformance. And it's something that's been very popular. There are two generations of the Superformance Daytona Coupe. The Generation 1 car is a Superformance with a Superformance uh, VIN number to it. The Generation 2 cars came out a few years later. They changed a few things on these cars. The B pillar is a little different with the integrated brake duct. There are door handles on this car where the Generation 1 use a solenoid popper setup. The front tubular control arms on this car are a little shorter. Uh, allows us to run a deeper dish wheel on the front, which is more into the traditional styling of the car. 15 inch or 18 inch wheels can be um, bolted onto the Superformance uh, Daytona Coupe. Engine wise, it's very limited because of the tubular setup in the front. You can really only do a small block forward in these cars. Um, 302, 351 base motors have basically what's been put into these cars to date. Now that won't preclude you from probably going ahead if you do want to do a modern motor with a more pro touring setup like we can do in the Cobras, the option here would probably be the new Godzilla motor that is offered through Ford Performance. We did attempt to put in a Coyote motor with our friends at Oltoff Racing. Too much modification on the front end. It can fit, um, but it requires a lot of modification, even cutting on the chassis. We are not comfortable with that. So we shied away from that idea and just stayed with the 351 Windsor powered setup. Most people, when they get these cars, they do that. They get the 351 from a company like Roush or Ford Performance or even Shelby Engine Company, stroked out the 427, and that is a great power package here. Five-speed transmission, again, is a good setup. And speaking of transmissions, one thing I didn't go over with the Cobras, those are five-speed setups. There are some companies out there and dealers that will tell you to put a six-speed in it. The cars are so light and geared in the rear end with the 346 gear, you just do not need a six-speed manual transmission in the car. You'll never, ever use six gear. You're going to pay more money for that transmission, and it's a little bit more difficult to install. So even with this and the Cobras, five-speed transmission behind that tried-and-true Windsor setup is something that we find styling-wise. The vast majority of Daytona Coupes are styled just like you see here. Traditional Guardsman Blue, Wimbledon White Stripes, Half Cove painted in the rear end. This one is wearing the optional 18-inch wheels, but we have seen some other options when it comes to this. Um, one of the cars we recently finished, again for our friend Vinny, is a Ferrari Fuji Pearl car with Viper Blue Stripes and a Carbon Flash Center Stripe, some custom gauges and custom forge line wheels. First one with our new forge lines on it. So you don't have to just go traditional with these cars. There's some options that you can do. You can explore and really customize it to make it your own. And this is a great evolution of what the Cobra was. Why did the Daytona even come out? More aerodynamics is what they were after, especially with those big tracks in Europe. This was car was campaign, campaigned very successfully through Bob Mondrant and some other famous drivers but it was short-lived and the reason for that is Ford was getting into racing which is now being infamous with the Ford versus Ferrari movie they were going racing with the new GT GT40 this is the mark one and this is the car that when you get it from Superformance it is a GT40 it uses the same monocoque chassis over 80 percent of any of the Superformance GT40s will interchange with the car from the 60s these receive an original P chassis number, and you're even going to find these cars in the GT40 World Registry. They are eligible. The new cars are still eligible to be put into that book, the book that's printed. You're going to find some of the older cars because it hasn't been updated in a while. Um, when it comes to GT40s, they're same thing with all of our Superformance cars. You can do traditional style setups, and we'll show you a Ken Miles and a golf car here in a minute. And, or you can do something very customized like this, where the customer sat down and said, I want a GT40, but I don't want an, you know, an original race livery or something like that. So what we did something like this is, this is a Mark I, 15 inch wheels can be fitted onto this car, but here at Downforce, we have the ability to put 18 inch all the way around on this with still a nice side profile, so they don't look like big, ridiculously oversized wheels on these cars. And, you can do different things on this. This has a golf style stripe on it, but with a modern paint scheme off of the new Ford GT or the new GT 500 Mustang, liquid blue, carbon flash, things of that, and all can be customized. This car also wears uh, a factory blackout package from Superformance. But this is the Mark I 
This is the car that a lot of people kind of think about when they think about GT40s, especially because the 0506 was modeled after the Mark 1. It's a little bigger, but this is the original size car here um, and compared to the 0506s. Power plant wise, um, until we kind of came on board, most people were putting in 302 or 351 base engine packages with this five speed transaxle. When we came on board, we saw an opportunity to again, start adding that pro touring styling and elements to these cars. So you can fit a Coyote family motor into this car. We've very famously put in 5.2 illuminators into a golf car. Our Ken Miles 66 Daytona edition featured a 5.2 illuminator engine, which has become a very popular option. We're doing a lot of these cars with those motors. This particular car is going to get outfitted with that. So as the story goes, the Mark I was moderately successful. Ken Miles did win Daytona in 65 in a Mark I, but they weren't successful enough. So they began to evolve that idea and you go from a Mark I to a Mark II. And until Ford versus Ferrari, this was the kind of the forgotten car that Superformance did because when people wanted a GT40, they wanted a Mark I. And now that Ford versus Ferrari's come out and really talked about the Mark II and what the Mark II is all about, um, they become very popular. It was a much heavy lean towards the Mark I as far as the ordering mix. Now it's almost 50-50 with the Mark II. Uh, compared to the Mark 1. This particular car is finished in a Ken Miles 66 Le Mans livery, which now everybody has been kind of very famously attracted to. Before that, uh, the golf car and the num black number two car were without question the two most popular ones that we've done. Biggest difference between a Mark 1 and a Mark 2, you're gonna see are the bigger scoops in the back, the periscope scoops on the top, the single scoop hood here on the nose. Speaking of that, that is an option on the Mark 1. Uh, the triangular twin scoop hood on the Mark 1 is standard. You can opt into the single scoop hood. Um, same setup with the engine, the transmission, and the chassis. The monocoque original style chassis, interchangeable. Same thing with the P chassis number. 15 inch wheels are standard from the factory. Here at Downforce, we can get you into a set of 18 inch wheels on this car and you can really kind of customize it. When you find people, it's one or the other. Is it a new styled setup with the pro touring mentality or is it an old school livery like this? These cars can also, any of our GT40s can also be built and spec'd out to go vintage racing. Um, we race our red 98 car in the Optimus Streetcar Challenge or along with HSR and SVRA. So there are some options that you can. That's how authentic these cars are. Uh, they do run coilover shocks and will disc brakes at all four corners. Um, the Mark II is a great setup. Um, one option that you can put into a Mark II, as far as engine goes, you cannot fit into a Mark I, is the FE motor. The FE motor will fit into this. Um, it's a very popular setup, um, especially when you're doing a Mark II. So from a Mark II, we're, some people think we're taking a step backward, but actually what happened is 66 famously was one with a Mark II at Le Mans. 67 was with the GT40 Mark IV, or some people just name it the Mark IV, also powered by a 427. After 67, the FIA outlawed the big motor, but they allowed the five liter. So a lot of teams went back to the Mark I, but the FIA allowed them to run bigger wheels and tires. So what we have here is the 68-69 GT40 Mark I wide body. The biggest difference is obviously in the back where we can run a much wider tire. You're talking a 295 tire on the back of a Mark I. On a Mark I wide body, you can run a 345 or even a 355 with our Forge line wheels on the back, which gives you some massive rubber. So those are the big differences between the Mark I and Mark I extra wide body is the rear end. Um, you start to get a little bit different in the nose. The single scoop hood is standard on the Mark I wide body. Um, as far as options goes with any of our GT40s, whether it's this Mark II or any of the Mark I's, the gurney bubble, the aluminum lips on the top, rear spoilers are optional on Mark I's. And again, it goes into customization. Do you want an original style setup? Do you want a more modern color? Like this car is finished in Corvette Red Mist Metallic with carbon flash stripes. And it just goes into the customization of whatever the customer wants. And then from the Mark I is probably our most rare GT40. And we're fortunate enough here at Downforce Motorsports to have 
one of these cars. We did a side-by-side -side comparison with another Gulf Color GT40. This is the very exclusive GT40 Tool Room Edition. And what is a tool room? This is as close of a copy as you're going to get of 1075, the car that famously won Le Mans in 1968 and 69. This car is essentially that. It's a race car. It is set up to be emulate that car, be FIA legal, comes in right-hand drive only. And speaking of right-hand drive, right-hand and left-hand drive are options on our Mark I, Mark I wide body, and our Mark II. But here on the tool room car, they only come in right-hand drive. The dash is very period correct setup. This looks very similar body-wise to our Mark I wide body, but actually they don't share a single panel at all. Everything on this car is different. The doors, the single, the st steel press roof in the center is different. Every panel on a two room car is different. And you're gonna see that even wider rear end on the two room edition than on the Mark I extra wide body. Um, gonna come with extra coolers front and back, a different rear cradle in the back, um, just to try to emulate the styling and feel of that race car from the 60s. Um, we find that this car is more for the collector or for the guy who actually wants to go full out FIA racing, the classic series, the Goodwood, the Vintage Le Mans, things like that. And they just want a car from the factory that's set up to do exactly that. This car is um, a unique serial number. The car is from the 60s. They got a P10 or P1000 series number. The Ken Miles car, for example, was P1015. The car that won Le Mans was P1075. Um, with the super performance cars, they're all in the 2000s. With the two room car, they get their own unique set of numbers, P1100s. They're only making 50 of these. Most of them have been sold by now, but there are still a few left. Um, this is the pinnacle of the GT40 lineup that we are able to get from Superformance, officially licensed. It is a GT40, goes into the world registry. So in closing, I hope you've enjoyed this video and we're going over everything from the Superformance slab side all the way up to the tool room edition. What Superformance offers is fully licensed, fully manufactured vehicles. They're not kit cars. A lot of people will say, well, if it's not original, it's a kit. You couldn't be any further from the truth. This is as close as you're gonna be able to get without spending lots and lots of money to get a car from the 60s. You can get a car that's as close as you want it to be. You can get a car that emulates that, but gives you the pro touring setup with customization. I encourage you, if you want some more information on these vehicles, on any of the Superformance products, to go to our website, which is downforcemotorsports.com. You can contact us here at the South Carolina Showroom, which is 803 900 0500 our wisconsin showroom which is 715-525-2669 we'll be happy to get you any information you want on any of the super performance vehicles and see how we can put one of these great cars into your garage